All right, so what we've already described is that pretty much everything's driven by this infamous Q widget. And everything is driven by signals and slots. So let's really look at what's the best way to use a signal and slot and why would you do it a specific way? Like I said earlier, there's multiple ways of doing this. So we're just gonna make a Q dialog app, next, next, finish. Let's crack open our dialog here. And let's go ahead and add a few things. We're going to say include QDebug. And let's go ahead and include QDateTime. We've covered these pretty in depth in our Qt Core series, but in case you don't know what they are, you can always look them up in the official documentation. You can also select something and press F1, and it'll bring up the documentation for you, just in case you're ever confused. Now, buyer beware, the documentation is world class, but it's usually not the complete story. So when in doubt, always refer to Google or tutorials. So we've got QDebug, QDateTime. Debug is going to allow us to put debug messages out onto the console. And DateTime is going to allow us to work with, well, you guessed it, dates and times. We're going to make three distinct buttons here. Let's actually go out to our UI. And let's resize our dialog a little bit. And we're going to make three buttons. Just going to wherever I feel like on the form here. And we're going to say internal. Let's call this button internal. Let's call this editor. And you may have guessed what we're going to be doing here. We're going to connect signals and slots up in different manners and see which one's the appropriate way for different situations here. And this one's going to be called connect. Now, in case you're wondering why I'm typing on the button correctly instead of using this little object inspector here, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. Uh, both of them are going to give you the same results. So I could have very easily just sent text and then connect and then notice how it keeps the filter as I select objects. There we go. I'm going to, you guessed it, set a vertical layout here. That way it just looks nice and pretty. So we have three buttons. Save and run just to make sure we get a good build. And our beautiful application does absolutely nothing. Let's go ahead and fix that problem. So let's flip back to our dialog real quick. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add a private slot. I'm going to say private slots. And let's just say void do stuff. The ever descriptive do stuff. Right click, refractor, and then we're going to add the definition inside of our implementation. Notice how you have different options. I almost always do it inside of the implementation file. That way it's nice, neat, easy to follow. All right, now in our implementation file, what we want to do is actually be able to see what's going on. So we're going to say Q info. This comes from our Q debug import. And we want to say, hey, it was clicked. Then we get the Q date time. We're going to get the current date and time. And we want to just do a simple two string. Make life super easy on us. And then we're just going to accept this out. Now, notice how accept is being called, and this will close the form. So if you want to comment that out for testing, you can. And we may actually just do that just so we can see it in action here. Now, let's jump back here. We've got our three buttons. We've got an internal, we've got the editor, and connect. So let's look at internal. Internal is just, you know, if you're kind of in a hurry and you just want to go bang, bang, you're just going to click drag and then we're going to say clicked and then we want to just accept it. And that works great in a pinch. We can save and run this and it's going to work as expected. No questions asked, but it didn't put any output. We didn't see that little debug message. That's one of the gotchas of it is it's really not super helpful unless you just want to call a slot right away and you don't really care about what's going to happen. The other way is using the editor where you actually right click, go to slot, 
and you can see how well we have clicked in the QAbstract button. We have QWidget, we have QObject, but we don't have direct access into this dialogs slots. Like if we go back in here real quick, remember we made this slot, but we don't have access to it. So this is kind of just, hey, if you want to build a special function for it without having to go through the hassle, hassle of building your own slot, then we'll just go in here and then we could just call this directly. So now we can save and run. You notice how now we have our debug info where if we click this because it's just that internal, it's not going to do it. Let's go ahead and clear all that out. Now let's look at the last way of doing things. And this is actually, some people call it the preferred mains, um, but it really doesn't matter. It just depends on how you want to do it. So we're going to connect this up and we're going to connect the UI. Notice how when we do dot, we now see our controls here. So we're going to do the button connect and we're going to say Q push button and we want the clicked signal. Do the signal, not the slot. So we're going to say clicked. And then we're going to connect this to our dialog. Now we can call our slot directly. Now, if this is really confusing and you've never done this before, I would highly recommend you read up on Q object. Um, bit of shameless advertising. Take my Q core for beginners, intermediate, and advanced on Udemy. Um, or just run some tests yourself. And there's a lot of documentation on how to connect signals and slots. But the basic structure is you're calling connect and you're saying this object, this signal is going to connect to this object's slot. So when this happens, run this. That's really what you got to focus on. When this happens, run this. And honestly, your UI designer is doing pretty much the same thing. You see right here, slot, accept. So signal. So you've got the sender is the button, the signal's clicked, the receiver is the dialog, the slot is accept. So it's doing all this for you in the background. Now, what is the preferred method? What, well, it really depends on what you're trying to get done here. So save and run. If you just want to call it and you don't care and it's kind of a built-in thing, yes, doing the internal is perfectly fine. If you want to make your own little function here and do some extra stuff here, well, then you would do the editor method, which is where you right click the button and go to slot. Otherwise, usually the best method is you actually create your own connection. That way you can fully manage what's going on. So let's do that and let's finish this app up and really demonstrate here. So actually let's call this cute critical. Actually, let's do Q debug instead. I have an extra Q in there? I do. How embarrassing. All right. We're just going to debug some stuff out. Let's say extra stuff. And let's save this. And let's run. So we can connect signals and slots automatically by the internal and nothing happens. Run that again. We've done it through the editor. We're calling the special function that it created for us, and we can add some extra stuff and call other functions. You can see extra stuff clicked. And then the actual connect code that we did ourselves. This is like the highest degree of control right here. So that really demonstrates the three different methods. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger project out of Udemy called Cute Widgets for Beginners with C++. This is a large course with 73 lectures and 17 hours of video footage. This course covers everything from what is a widget all the way down to complete example applications using the skills you've learned in this course. Sorry, there's no QML in this course. This is strictly Cute Widgets. I will make a QML course later on, but this just focuses on widgets from a beginner's perspective. Even though this is a beginner's course, 
you do need to have some fundamental information available. You need to know C++ and the Qt Core Libs. I do have some courses available out on Udemy, Qt Core Beginners, Intermediate, Advanced. It's not necessary you take these courses, but it is highly recommended. And as always, I'm available out on the Void Realms Facebook group, along with 3,000 other programmers. See you there.